Go. All right, party people. Hello, everybody. So let us turn to chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes. And we will begin to read, starting at verse 1. Send your grain across the seas, and in time profits will flow back to you. But divide your investments among many places. For you do not know the risks that might lie ahead. When clouds are heavy, the rains come down, and whether a tree falls to the north or to the south, it stays where it falls. Form farmers who wait for perfect weather will never plant, and if you watch every cloud, you will never harvest. Just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. Light is sweet. How pleasant to see a new day dawning. When people live to be very old, let them rejoice in everyday life. But let them also remember, there will be many dark days. Everything still to come is meaningless. Young people, it's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything you do. So refuse to worry. Keep your body healthy. But remember that youth, with a whole life before you, is meaningless. Chapter 12. Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your Creator. Honor Him in your youth before you grow old and say, Life is not pleasant anymore. Remember him before the light of the sun, moon, and stars is dim to your old eyes, and the rain clouds continually darken your skies. Remember him before your legs, the guards of your house, start to tremble, before your shoulders, the strong men stoop. Remember him before your teeth, your few remaining servants stop grinding, and before your eyes, the women looking through the window see dimly. Remember him before the door to life's opportunity is closed, the sound of work fades. Now you rise at the first chirping of the birds, but then all sounds will go faint. Remember him before you become fearful of falling and worry about dangers in the streets, before your hair turns white like an almond tree in bloom, as you drag along without energy like a dying grasshopper, and the casperberry no longer inspires sexual desire. Remember him before you near the grave, your everlasting home, when mourners will weep at your funeral. Yes. Remember your Creator now, while you are young, before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bowl is broken. Don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is broken at the well. And then the dust will return to the earth and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. And we'll end there. So what shall we talk about today? Old people? What was that berry? What was what? Perfect. The Casper berry. Casper berry. Casper berry. Yeah, whatever. I never eat. Never eat the Casper berry. I don't eat. Okay. I've never eaten it. So. But first, before we start looking at old people, let's look at benevolence. Shall we look at benevolence? Okay. Even if we look and say, no, not beloved benevolence, let's look at profit. It's kind of similar, right? It's got some similar things that go behind it. Because when you look to profit for yourself, what do you do? Well, you spread your investments out widely. I like other translations that say, cast your bread upon the water. Because after you say that, everyone says, you'll get soggy bread. Cast your grain across the sea, and in time, profits will flow back to you. 
And then in two it says, but divide your investments among many places. I like the translations that say, give unto seven or even eight portions. Verses one and two encourage kindness and hospitality or sound investment. But the principle is the same. What do you do? You take the money that you have, you take the attributes that you have, you take the products that you produce as a human being and you spread them out amongst others. What Solomon says here is things will flow back to you. What's that mean? You'll be taken care of. <laughs> now there's two ways you can go with that as I've been discussing here, right? You can either be like, yes, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to spread out my investments and then I will have so much money I, I won't know what to do with. You could turn yourself into a young John D. Rockefeller, senior. At the age of 23, John Rockefeller was a millionaire. So he took this part to heart. At the age of 50, he was a billionaire. How many people want to be billionaires at the age of 50? All right. Well, just remember this. He was the richest man in the world, in the world, and at the age of 53, he was so eaten up with physical diseases and ulcers, he was given one year to live. For the age of 53, he could eat nothing but milk and crackers. This is a man that could go out and say, you know what, I want to buy that restaurant. He could walk in, buy the restaurant, and have access to all the food that would be in there. But the only thing that he could keep down, the only thing that he could stomach at this point in time was milk and crackers. Because he spread it all out, he made wise investments, he cast apart sevens and eights portions, all so he could get back. And all he got back was disease, rotting insides, ulcerous stomachs, so what happened? Got stress. Got mad stress, yeah. <laughs> At the age of 53, after a year of eating nothing but milk and crackers. Oh. <laughs> I can't even imagine doing it. At the age of 53, he made a life-changing decision. <laughs> he said to himself, I have always been the taker and never been the giver. So he started giving. He gave to churches, hospitals, started a foundation. He funded research into medicines. Many of his discoveries, many of the discoveries we have in medicine, in fact, is due to the John D. Rockefeller Foundation that has funded these things. The man who had only one year to live at the age of 53 lived until the age of 90. He was given a year to live, and he spent that year eating crackers and drinking milk. Is that what you want to reap when you cast your grain upon the sea? Or do you want to give freely of what you have? not worrying about what you're going to receive. Remember elsewhere in the Bible, it tells us specifically that if we take care of others, if we think of their needs, we will be taken care of. We won't have to worry about it. Now, this day and age, you have a lot of prosperity religions, right? You have hmm, prosperity evangelical. Even the church has been taken up with this prosperity theology. Give freely unto my house and your windows will overflow. So if you're not rich, it's because you haven't given enough to your church. It's still got the wrong focus. It still leads to stomach rot. I hate stomach rot. Because of the stress in my life at the age of 14. Where does a 14 year old get stress? Seriously. Straight up truth right there. 
No offense, Mark. But parents, school, job, you know, at the age of 14, you can work. Don't put yourself to work for stupid reasons, though. The skis were not worth it. In <laughs> retrospect, they were not worth it, okay? Just so you know. Because of the stress at the age of 14, because of my inability to display any type of emotions, to hold everything in and never let anybody know what was going on, I have to take medicine every day for the rest of my life. Was that worth it? I would say no. Because when it breaks in your mouth, it's true. <laughs> and then I'm always worried about running out, and then we have to make emergency trips to Costco. <laughs> On a Saturday, when half of their parking lot's destroyed, it just is not fun. Now, what other reasons can we be benevolent for? Well, it shares right here. Now, I'm making this known right now. These next verses, favorite verses in the Bible. I'm going to, I'm going to speak it to you the way I memorized it. <laughs> when a cloud is full of water, it will rain. And whether a tree falls to the north or to the south, in the spot where it falls, there it will lie. Favorite verses. Duh. Now, some of you would say, well, the tree's not going to lie there for very long because, you know, this is Oregon, this is timber country, we're going to come on, pick it up, we're going to make a house out of it, you know, something. I've also heard of another one. Instead of tree, think of a stick. Now, one of the ways to determine what's going to happen in your life is to leave it up to the fates. One of the ways to do this and divine what's going to happen is you take a long stick, and you take the stick and you throw it up in the air. And the place where it falls, the place where it points, that tells you what's going to happen next in your life. You can divine the future, but you can't control how that stick is going to fall. But it will tell you what's going to happen. So the same word that's used for tree, that's translated as tree, is also translated as stick. And this was a common practice even in the Temple of Solomon. Not the temple, pardon me, the palace. Whether it falls to the north or the south, you can't control the direction it's going to fall. You can't control the blowing of the wind. You can't control the growth of a child in the womb. Although sometimes you wish you could when it's all freaky and the foot's sticking out. And it looks like it's going to bust through. There's going to be days of darkness. You can't control the revolution of the earth. You have very little control when you really think about it. It's kind of tough for a lot of people in this day and age to accept, right? I don't know about you, but I've been told that I have to control everything. I have to take care of everything. If I don't do it, nobody will do it. And if I know how to do a task, only I can do it right. Nobody else can do it like I can do it. I still struggle with that. I see my wife smiling at me. One of the, the things that we're all taught is nobody does it as good as you do it. So do it for yourself. But even then, all we're creating is milk and crackers for a year. Ugh. Soggy crackers. If you wait forever to do your work, it will never get done. Duh. If you wait forever to plant your seed, you'll never have any crops. If you wait for the right conditions, perfect weather, to harvest, you will never harvest anything. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Seize the day not in, let's see what I can get out of this, but seize the day as in, 
What can I give today? Now, let's talk a little bit about young and old. This is excellent advice to those that are young. If you'll start out this way, just think of everything that you will read from. Just think of how well you'll take care of your Bibles. Remember, as we start to look at old and young, that Solomon still says all is vanity and all is meaningless. That everything under the sun is nothing. But believe it or not, just as it says here in verse 9, Young people, it's wonderful to be young, enjoy every minute of it, do everything you want to do, take it all in. But remember that you must give an account to God for everything that you do. God wants you to have a good time, people. Are you having a good time? Yeah. <laughs> Truthfully, that's better than the response I expected. God wants you to have a good time. He wants you to be joyful. He wants you to do things that are pleasing. He wants you to play video games. He wants you to play laser tag. He wants you to play paintball games. He wants you to watch good movies. He wants you to enjoy food and drink. Be it fast food, caffeine field, preservative junk. He wants you to enjoy these things. But be mindful that you give an account to him. Be mindful that what you put into your body is going to do things to your body. Be mindful that Mountain Dew does eventually rot your guts. Just say. <laughs> does that stop me from drinking it? No. But I drink it in moderation. I enjoy it when I can enjoy it. It becomes a special treat for me. And I drink, you know, coffee, which is good for you. <clears throat> yes, even flavored coffee. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you knew that was going to come up eventually. So, God wants you to rejoice in your youth, but he doesn't want you to lose sight of the judgment. God has created man with the energy to enjoy life, especially when we're young. Especially when we're young. As long as that energy is directed in the right channels, your youth will be a time of great joy. Along the same vein, remember that Solomon advises us to remember God in our youth. So, should we be out all night partying? Sure. Depends on what you're partying with and who you're partying with. Are you keeping God in mind when you go to the party down the street? Are you keeping him in mind when you walk into that party and it's filled with pot smoke and it's filled with kegs all over the place? That doesn't exist. I gotta be honest. You're lucky to get one keg. I mean, let's be honest. And then that goes like that. So the 250 you paid to get in the door, you didn't get any beer out of it. It's not worth it. Sucks. Not unless it's a 13K party. I haven't seen that yet. Oh. So are you thinking about God when you go to that? Are you thinking about God when you try to enjoy your youth in that? Is there other ways to enjoy your youth other than getting drunk, getting high? Having premarital sex with women you'll never see again, or may see again eventually. Yeah. Is there something better than just seeking out pleasures? Yes, there is. I survived a few of those encounters and parties and raves. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, there were raves in my past. I'll admit it. <clears throat> it was not worth it. I'll admit that as well. No. <laughs> no, this would be my wife's doing. T shirt and jeans. All the way up through college. That's great. <clears throat> However, the t-shirts don't fit anymore. You don't want to see that. Anyways. <clears throat> yeah. Is there something more than seeking out those type of earthly pleasures? Yes, there is. Can you have fun without drinking, having sex, smoking drugs, or taking drugs some other way? Yes, you can have fun. You can even end up with a healthy body when you're done having fun. Because you haven't rotted it away. You haven't riddled yourself with guilt. You've respected the temple that God has given you. The temple that was made in his own image. Because you do have to give an accounting for those things. Don't lose sight of the judgment. Serving God is not just for the elderly. It is not just for people to come in and sit in their specific pew that they've donated enough so it now has their name on it. It is for the young. I can think of numerous great men in the Bible that served God when they were young. Right? Joseph, Samuel, David, Solomon, Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were on fire for God. <laughs> actually, actually not. Oh! Yes. It was as if they were on fire for God. But yet, they weren't. Serving God helps you to make the right choices. What kind of a choice did Joseph make when he was sold into slavery in Egypt? Do you think it was fun to say, you know what, I'm going to serve this guy that I've been sold to as a slave? I'm going to do the best job I can possibly for him. Some people thought it was fun. He didn't think it was fun. But he still did exactly what he needed to do. He still held on, knowing that God was preserving him. Even in this downtrodden time, God was taking care of him. So he followed the direction that God put on his heart, and he served his master well. Very well. And it helped Daniel to keep God's perspective in mind. When he was tossed into captivity, when he had to deal with being told, you're going to eat this so you get nice and fat, Nice, healthy young man, lots of energy and vigor, and you'll be able to subject your fellow captives. You think it, it strengthened him when he was told not to pray to God, and yet he continuously did, even with the threat of being thrown into the lion's den. The evidence is there, preserved it. According to VeggieTales, the lion's head pizza. <laughs> Difficult days are coming. Enjoy your youth because it's no great thing to age. Death catches up to you. Just listen to the, the figurative language Solomon uses in chapter 12, verses 3 through 7, the keepers of the house will tremble. Your arms are going to weaken. The strong men bow down. Your legs are going to fail. You. The grinders cease because they are few. Your teeth fall out. And you cannot chew. The women that look through the windows grow dim. Your eyes lose your sight. 
the doors shut in the streets, it becomes hard to hear. The sound of grinding is low. You start to mumble and all that kind of things that you're saying, and you just talk a little low and stuff. And then people think you're crazy because you're talking to yourself and you don't have a Bluetooth in your ear. All the daughters of music are brought low. Can't sing anymore. Your voice is shot. They're afraid of heights because you might fall and break a hip. And terrors of the way are in the way. You no longer feel invincible because your body reminds you on a daily basis you're not. When the almond tree blossoms, when the old age starts to set in, when the grasshopper is a burden, when you're old and bowed like an insect and you can barely get around, that actually kind of hurts. When desire fails, when you take whatever aphrodisiac and it no longer gives you sexual desire. When the man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. That would be death, people. Think of this. In the remaining stuff, think of these things that he says here. Before the silver cord is loose, that'd be your spinal cord. The golden bowl is broken. That's your skull. The pitcher shattered at the fountain. Your heart. The wheel broken at the well. Your head. And finally, the body returns to dust and the spirit returns to God. <coughs> but thanks to Solomon, we know how we can endure life's vanities. We can avoid making things worse with our own folly. We can sow seeds of giving that can help us in those later days or when things are evil. The challenges of the youth are great. There's many temptations. The world promises so much to us. You are young. The world is yours. The young are susceptible to depression and despair, especially in this day and age. Because the world is theirs, but it means nothing. What purpose is it to have everything if it's meaningless? There is much to life that can be enjoyed and provided. If you rejoice in your youth, you remove the sorrow and evil, you remember God in your youth, and reflect on the days ahead. Keep these things in your hearts. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. They have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting Christ Jesus. First Timothy 4.12 Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way that you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. And then finally, <coughs> reflect upon the words of the Apostle Paul to Galatia, because it definitely applies to the young. Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. 
So live your lives with vision. Enjoy life, keeping in mind that you will be giving an accounting to God, and you will stand before Him. Seek out after those things that are pleasant. Play paintball. Shoot people with paintball. It's fun. <laughs> At 350 PSI, a paintball gun can shoot the head off a snake. <laughs> That's fun. Enjoy youth. Even if you're old now, you can still enjoy your life. Age is more up here, even when your body fails down here. Come to the main and enjoy food. What is Solomon telling us here? Other than life is meaningless, we'll discuss his ending phrase for Ecclesiastes next week. But what is he telling us here? Seeds the day. And all I'm adding to that is, seize the day, but remember, you're going to be held accountable for it. you got to stand before God. That's all I'm saying. Take charge. Take care of things. Give, and you will be given unto. It's all good. God takes care of us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the promise that we find in the words of your servant Solomon. We thank you though, to, that even though he focuses on worldly wisdom, that we can see your godly wisdom guiding his hand even in that. We thank you for the promise that, uh, that we've been given. We thank you for the, the bodies that we've been given. We thank you for all the beautiful things you've created around us, all the wonderful things that you've given us to enjoy. We just pray that we would take those opportunities to enjoy those things. We would take the opportunity to eat good food, to see beautiful sights. We would take the opportunity to play games. We would take the opportunity to just enjoy what is bountiful to us. Pray that you will keep us strong to remember as we take part in those things, as we focus on enjoying those things that are around us, that it won't detract from you, that it won't take us away from you, that we will keep you, even in those times of great pleasure, in mind as we look, as we seek to grow closer in relationship to you. As we seek to understand who we are, may we have a great understanding of who we are in relation to you. I pray this in your son's name. Amen. Go play paintball. <laughs> Well, I've heard the word paintball about ten times. James loves paintball. <laughs> <laughs>